In the first two videos of this series, I wrote this application, an application that seems pretty trivial on the surface, but realistically presents some of the biggest challenges you'll face when trying to write a reactive application using a server-side framework like Rails. In the first video, I demonstrated how we could do this using Turbo Frames. And in the second video, I updated the application to use Turbo Streams. Both of these videos were meant to be a basic introduction to Turbo. The result in both cases is not production quality code and does not necessarily follow the best practices. In this video, I'm going to dive a little bit deeper and present what I think is a more robust implementation that addresses some of the shortcomings of the prior two implementations and modern reactive applications in general. For this implementation, I am going to set three goals. Number one, clean, maintainable code. Number two, user experience. Number three, stateful URLs, meaning if, for example, a user is viewing this train, they should be able to refresh the page and still be viewing this train. They should also be able to bookmark this page and come back to it at any time. And finally, the application should respect the browser's back and forward buttons. This was never a problem with server-side frameworks in the past because one of the benefits of refreshing the entire page every time you want to do something is that meant a different URL, which typically, again, was bookmarkable and it also respected the browser history. Meeting this goal is not necessarily just a problem with hotwire applications. This is a problem that single page applications have had since the beginning. If you've ever used a single page application or programmed a single page application, I'm sure you're aware of this problem. So let's start with stateful URLs. As you notice, as I navigate through this application, the URL stays the same, no matter which page I'm on. Therefore, if I use the back button, it's simply gonna take me back to the page I was on before I open the application. If I refresh the page, it's simply gonna take me back to the default. So how can I represent this page, or this page, this page, or even this page in the URL? Let's use this page as an example. So what would I need to track? I need to know that we are on the planes tab and that we are on the edit view of the plane and that the plane we're viewing has a certain ID. Well, I could use query parameters. I could say tab equals plane, view equals edit, and ID equals three. So how might I actually implement this in code? Well, my first thought is I would need to move all of this to the server side. If you watch my first videos, you know that this tab component actually uses JavaScript in order to set the active tab. So I would need to move all of that on the back end and render uh, this entire page whenever a new, whenever there's a URL change, or when the page is refreshed, or when the link is visited through a bookmark. So this would solve the stateful URL problem, and browser refreshes would work just fine, as well as the history and bookmarks. But how do I update this URL as I'm navigating around the page here? Well, this would require JavaScript, probably in the form of a stimulus controller that would consistently um, update this URL based on where I'm at on the page. I would also have to push the new URL into the browser history in order for the back button to work. While I'm confident I could make that work, it seems very complex, and it seems like it's working against the Rails framework, not with it. So how else might I represent this state in the URL? Well, I could use the Rails way, simply visiting slash planes slash three for the ID slash edit. If I visit that URL, however, you see that it pulls up the edit form, but we lose our tabs and every other component on the page. To me, this is clearly the better option. I should not have to abandon the Rails convention for a presentation concern. I am also fairly confident that by adopting this convention, I will be able to leverage some of the capabilities of the Rails framework. Rather than crafting my own solution, this will result in much cleaner code. So before I move on to implementation solutions, let's recap the requirements for the application. First of all, when a new vehicle is created or destroyed, we need to update the accounts or the accounts at the top of the page accordingly. Second, we need to be able to switch between models by clicking on one of the tabs. And finally, we need to be able to create, read, update, and delete vehicle records from each of these tabs. And then we have our overarching goals, which includes clean code, and the best possible user experience. Ideally, only updating the parts of the page that absolutely need to be updated with each user interaction. The application could be split into three dynamic sections or frames. 
the Counts section, the Tab section, and the Tab Contents section. The contents of the outer frame will need to be refreshed on tab changes and when vehicles are created and deleted. For vehicle index pages, show pages, new pages, and edit pages, only the inner frame will need to be refreshed. I will be making use of the application layout for the count section and the tab section for maximum reusability and yielding the tab content to the current route. First, I'm going to change the main heading of the tab test index page and move the contents over to our layout file. Next, I'll remove the model specific turbo frame tags from our original implementation and replace them with one turbo frame tag called vehicles frame. I will yield to the route in the body of the turbo frame tag. Rather than trying to modify the JavaScript version of these tabs, I'm just going to go out to the Flowbyte page and I'm going to pull in the non interactive or the non JavaScript versions. And now I'll have cursor modify these anchor tags and convert them to link to helpers. Now I can safely remove the tabs test controller, view, and route. Now I need to modify the turbo frame tag on the index, show, new, and edit views for each of the models. They should now reference the vehicles frame rather than the model specific frames. Jumping over to the browser, you can see that the, the routing when you click on a tab is working correctly, meaning the URL is changing and the actual view is changing within our uh, turbo frame. However, the active tab classes are not being applied correctly, so it continues to show that the trains tab is the active tab when it shouldn't be. We'll work on that next. To solve this, I'm going to create an application level view helper. This helper will be responsible for returning the active or non active CSS classes based on the resource in the URL. Back in the browser, you can see that the classes are now being properly applied. The two remaining tasks are to get the vehicle counts working properly and to update the URL when links are clicked within the vehicle's turbo frame. In case you are wondering why the URL is being updated when we click on the tabs, but not for the rest of the links, it is because the tab links exist outside of a turbo frame and therefore they're treated like regular turbo drive links. The response from links clicked within a turbo frame targets only that frame, and Turbo does not automatically see them as a route change. However, Turbo does give us the ability to explicitly tell it when we want them to be reflected as a change in the route. This turbo frame link targeting behavior is exactly why the counts are not being updated on create and delete operations. Fortunately, we can tell entire frames or individual links within a frame to target a different frame. We'll do that next. Starting with the destroy button on the show view, I'll add a data turbo frame attribute with the value of underscore top, which is a special value telling turbo to target the entire body. Back in the browser, we can confirm that the count is being updated when we destroy a train. And now I want to add the same data attribute to the form partial. In this case, I can add it directly to the form element. Adding it to the form element means that we will be affecting both the create and the update operations. I think that's a reasonable compromise to keep the code as simple and clean as possible. Back in the browser, we can see that the count is updated when we create a new train. And now I just need to go make the same changes to the planes and to the automobiles. And now I'll just quickly confirm that everything is working as expected. Making it so the links within our turbo frame update the URL is very simple. It comes down to adding another data attribute, this time 
on the turbo frame tags themselves. The attribute is data turbo action, and the value we want here is advance. This value will tell Turbo to update the URL and to push the URL to the browser history. We will need to update the Turbo frame tag on the application layout and the show, edit, new, and index views for each of the models. Back in the browser, you can see that the URL is being updated with every route change for each of our models. And granted, it isn't pretty. The application is working exactly the way we expected it to work. I would say we accomplished our goals of stateful URLs, a nice reactive and responsive user experience, and generally the code looks pretty clean, sticking mostly with the Rails conventions. The approach I took with this application is not the only approach you could take. Of course, you could use a variety of different methods using turbo streams and turbo frames and stimulus, but I feel like this approach offers a good compromise. But I'm interested in what you think. Do you think Hotwire offers a good alternative to single page application frameworks like React and Vue? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.